In this video, I want to begin chapter four. In our series, in chapter three, we talked a lot about quadratic functions and their graphs and equations and inequalities. Now we're at a point where we want to move on to higher degree polynomials, cubic polynomials, quartic polynomials, pentic po quintic polynomials. These things are just higher degrees, right? What if you want a degree three, a degree four, a degree five polynomial? Now it's going to be it's going to be a requisite for us that as we start working with higher and higher and higher degree polynomials, uh, so-called power functions, we need to be affluent with exponential expressions and particularly the laws of exponents. The the most the primary three are actually these three right here. So when you're working with an exponent, if you have any positive number a and you raise it to the exponent m, what happens when you multiply together two exponential expressions? So I should make make mention of that when you see an exponent expression like a to the n, collectively we refer this to as an exponential expression. The number on the bottom is called the base of the exponential, and then the this right here is what we often call the exponent, or sometimes it's called the power. And then when you put these things together, we call that an exponential expression. And so the laws of exponents are what we can do to algebraically manipulate simplify and substitute exponential expressions. If you have a to the m and you multiply that by a to the n, so the base is the same, but the we have exponents here. Turns out that you can add the exponents together. So when you multiply together exponential expressions, you add the exponents. And the idea is kind of like the following. If I have an a squared and I times that by an a cubed, well, what that means is you have an a times a, and then you have an a times a times a. Dropping the parentheses, I have one, two, three, four, five a's where five is two plus three that's the idea behind that we add together the exponents now on the other hand when you, when you multiply exponentials you add powers what happens when you divide exponentials well if you divide exponentials then we're going to subtract the exponents and the idea here is the following if i have a to the fourth over a squared you're going to have a times a times a times a over a times a if you cancel the common a's you're left with just two a's and that's four minus two. So you subtract the exponents when you divide. And then the third one is if you have an exponential and then you raise that to a power, then you can actually multiply together the powers. So for example, if you had like a squared and you're gonna cube that, what that means is a squared, a squared, a squared. So the first one gives you two, the second one gives you two, the last one gives you two, you're gonna end up with a to the two plus two plus two, which is a to the sixth, which of course is a to the two times three power. And so if you know those three laws of exponents, you're probably gonna be good as gold as we start talking about power functions and then later on uh, exponential functions as well. But there's some other properties you should know when it comes to the laws of exponents. If you have two positive numbers, a times b, and you raise it to the power n, you can distribute that power and actually get a to the n times b to the n. And the idea, of course, is you have a times a all the way up to a, and you have b times b all the way up times the b. The thing is, since multiplication is commutative, you could, re you could reorganize all these things, right? And I guess I should have written it as like, you have a times b, you have a times b, and then you get a times b. So the idea is you have all these a's right here, you can gather them together in front, and then you put all of the b's in the back. Because our operation is a commutative, we can reorder everything. It's associative, we can redo the parentheses, we can redo this, and so you can distribute exponents across multiplication. Uh, it's also true for division, a over b raised to the nth power is the same thing as a to the n over b to the n, like so. Now, I should mention that if there's laws of exponents, that means there's also crimes of exponents. If you break such a crime, you have to go to exponential prison. Um, it is not true, on the other hand, that if you take a plus b, I'm writing this in red so it emphasizes blood, so think of death when you do this. If you take a plus b, many students try to make the mistake that this is a to the n plus b to the n. They try to distribute exponents across a sum or a difference, and that is not true. This is the, these are crimes of exponents, and this right here is public enemy number one. This is probably one of the most common mistakes that any student will do in an algebra class, is that they'll be tempted to distribute exponents across a, a sum of some kind, and that's completely false. Like for example, if we took two plus three and we squared that, the proper calculation would be two plus three, which is five, you square that and you get a 25. But it might be tempting to distribute this, right? 
2 squared plus 3 squared, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 plus 9 is 13, and last I checked, oh, let me see the comprehensive almanac of numbers. Yep, 13 and 25 are different numbers. So distribution of exponents is not a valid thing. So you want to watch out for that. Uh, that'll lead you to problems. So don't don't distribute exponents. It's it's a bad thing. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Doesn't work. Uh, some of the other exponential laws that I should mention here, if you take one to any power, you're going to get back one. And that's because one times anything is just that number. So if I take one times one times one times one times one, it's just going to be one. Um, also, if you take any number to zero power, that's going to be one itself. Uh, and this is the and this is the idea that if you take a number to the zeroth power, that's going to be the multiplicative identity. And that's mostly a consequence of this principle right here. If you take a to the negative n, that's going to equal one to over one over n right here. And so it's the idea behind that's the following. Taking negative exponents actually gives you reciprocals. If I take a to the n and I times that by a to the negative n, that ought to equal a to the n minus n, which is equal to a to the zero. Um, but on the other hand, if I take a to the n and I divide that by a to the n, which is what this thing's doing right here, by law number b, this should also be a to the 0 because I'm subtracting the exponents. But it also should equal 1 because if you take a number divided by itself, you get 1. And that's kind of explaining where these things come from. Negative exponents actually means division. It means reciprocals. In that vein, can we make any sense out of fractional exponents? Well, if you look at law number c right here, if I were to take something like a to the 1 over n and I raise it to the nth power, this by law number c should be a to the n over n power, which would be a to the first, which is just a. And so what we see here is that a to the 1 over n power whoops, should be the nth root of a, the number which when raised to the nth power gives you a. And then when you put these things together, a to the, a to the mn, this is going to be a to the 1 over n raised to the nth power. And if a to the 1 uh, to the nth power. And so a to the 1 over n, of course, is the nth root. So you get something like this. And so this gives us a way of trying to compute exponential expressions. And so I want to just do a handful of these examples to finish off this video right here. So how does one do something like 4 to the 3 halves power? What does a rational exponent mean? Well, the numerator gives you a power the denominator gives you a radical. So 4 to the 3 halves means you take the square root of 4 and you're going to cube it. So the square root of 4, of course, is 2, and 2 cubed is equal to 8. Notice how we can do this exponent, this rational exponent, without the need of a calculator. What about negative 8 to the 4 thirds power? Well, same thing. The 1 third power means you're going to take the cube root of negative 8, and you're going to raise that to the fourth power. Now, be aware that taking the cube root of a negative number is not forbidden. That's a problem for square roots and all even roots. But odd roots, there's no problem. The cube root of negative 8 is actually negative 2. And to verify that, be aware that if I were to take negative 2 and I cubed it, you would get negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4, times negative 2, which is negative 8. So no, no problem with that whatsoever. You can take the cube root of a negative number. Well, then if you take negative 2 to the fourth, that's going to end up with a positive 16. A negative 2 squared is 4, and then 4 squared is 16. Those are some exponential calculations with specific numbers. We can also simplify exponential expressions, maybe involving variables like x and y right here. So when you have a product inside of an exponent, you want to distribute that exponent, like on the first part. So you get x to the 2 thirds times y. We're going to multiply that by then. You're going to get x to the negative 2 to the 1 half power. And then you're going to get y to the 1 half power. Now, when you have a composite of exponents, you multiply them together by law number c. So you're going to get x to the 2 thirds y times that by x to the negative 1, y to the negative 1, one half. And so then you add together exponents, which then gives us we're going to get x to the 2, I'm going to just lower, I'm just going to lower, ignore this equal sign, we'll come to that one a little bit later. You're going to get x to the 2 thirds minus 1, and you're going to get y to the first plus 1 half. We have to add some fractions here, but 2 thirds take away 1 is going to be negative 1 third. And then y, if the exponent there, 1 plus a half, that'll be 3 halves, like so. And so this right here gives us the simplified form. 
Now, some people insist that we should write things without negative exponents. So if you do see that instructions, if you ever see a negative exponent, this means you just put it in the denominator. And so you're gonna get y to the three halves over x to the one half right there, or one third, excuse me. We could write this without any negative exponents whatsoever. And so then the last one, d, let's work that one out there. Let's distribute the exponent of one half. So you're gonna end up with the square root of nine because one half just means the square root. You're gonna get, you're gonna cut the exponent of x by one half. So you get two halves. And then for the y's, you're gonna multiply the exponents together and so you get one sixth. This will sit above x to the one sixth and then likewise y to the one half. So what's going on here, right? Because you have a fraction inside of the exponent, I'm gonna be taking 9x squared y to the one third raised to the one half power. And this sits above x to the one third y raised to the one third power. So like I mentioned the, the law earlier, if you have a fraction inside of a exponent, we can take the exponent of the numerator and denominator. Then as we have a product, we can distribute this into each of the pieces. So we get nine to the one half, we're gonna get x squared to the one half, and we're gonna get y to the one third, also raised to the one half power. And then the denominator, you're gonna get x to the one third, raised to the one half, and then you get y raised to the one half. And so when you have exponents nest composed with the exponents there, you multiply them together, and that's what we did here in this white step right there. Simplify anything that we can. The square root of nine is three. X to the two halves power will just be X to the first. We'll get Y to the one sixth. And then at the bottom, we get X to the one sixth and Y to the one half. As we have X's and Y's on top and bottom, we can subtract their exponents. So we're gonna look like three times X to the one minus one sixth power, and then Y to the one sixth minus one half power. You might need a common denominator to add those fractions together. X to the six over six minus one sixth, and then Y to the one sixth minus three sixth. Simplifying that, we're gonna get three times X to the five sixth power. And then the last one, we're gonna get Y to the negative two sixth. And while that is a perfectly good way of writing the answer, I'm gonna write each of the exponents as positive simplified fractions. So we're gonna get three X to the five six. You can't reduce the fraction five six, but two six becomes a third. And since it's a negative exponent, we're gonna put it in the bottom. You get Y to the one third power. And so this would be the simplified expression for that exponential expression we started off with.